I started in 1989 till present. I'm an Irish citizen. I have dual citizenship. They needed somebody that would be here for a while. And me having young kids, I knew eventually I'd like them to go to St. Cecilia, so it was kind of a way to get hooked up. I think the reason that uh, Pete is so valuable is his heart is in his work. He, he would never use the word ministry, but it really is ministry. He touches the lives of coaches and parents and kids because he, he, he generally cares about them. At the end of the game, you shake the other guy's hand. Uh, Kind of, it's kind of strange, but you're sh shaking their hand saying, hey, thanks for coming and playing against me. It's, it's, if you weren't here, I wouldn't have someone to play against. He's helpful, he's concerned, he always wants to make sure he's putting a, um, you know, his foot in to help out. Kids, I, I like coaching with the guy, I like being with the kids, I like being around the kids, I like to uh, instill in the kids fair play, uh, win or lose. I, I, I like, I, I like, Everybody ought to be on a, a level playing field, and I, I really enjoy the way US, CYO, you guys make the league so everybody can be equal and fair and be able to play against a team that, you know, that they can compete against. It's, it's so important. It's the most important thing I think CYO does. I can honestly say that over my experience knowing Pete, he's become a, a lifelong friend. At his daily work, serving the children uh, in the CYO program here for so many years is a real leaven to the students, to the young people. A pretty good story. We called, uh, Park and Rec changed us because we lost our fields. They put us out to Crocker Amazon. So me, Mike, and John showed up at Crocker before the, it was even light out, uh, along with my son, Brian. We got there, the goals were chained up, the fences were locked, and when we walked over to the eighth grade field, which was, going to, I think, a playoff game with St. Brendan's and St. Cecilia's, there was a hole in the middle of the field the size, the garbage can, somebody put the garbage can in the hole. I believe the year was 89, I, I could be wrong, but uh, the Giants had to win to clinch a spot for the playoffs. Uh, my brother John got three tickets behind the Giants dugout, and he had two people he could take. Well, one of them was without a doubt his girlfriend at the time, which is now his wife, Joan, and he had one left, and it was between myself and Pete. One person had to stay at the fields to run it, and then one got to go to the game. Well, I drew the short end of the straws, and... Well, well, well I think Pete said because you're in charge <laughs> yes. of soccer, yes. <laughs> uh, you would be maybe the better representative to be here at on site. Yeah. The Giants clinch, these guys have a great time, and the next day in the San Francisco Examiner on the front page, there's a picture of Barry Bonds on the dugout, and under his armpit is Joan, John, and Pete. <laughs> it wasn't that good. We used to use Sandy Media's uh, gym on uh, like Thursday night and Sunday evening. So one Sunday, we were down there, we had four or five games, and then after the gym was done, I swept up and cleaned up a little bit, and then I locked everything up and I went home. So I sat down in the living room and she came in, she said, how'd everything go? And I went, oh, went all right. And she said, where's Monica? And I went, oh no. I locked Monica in St. Media's gym. So I had to jump in the car and go back. And she was just sitting in the office, waiting for me to come back. If it wasn't for Kathy, the, this, this, I could never have done this job. And it's nice to go to work every day loving the job you're doing because it's not really working.